I'm gonna clear up some misconceptions about fasting. People are saying fasting so bad for you. Fasting's gonna make you lose muscle. Well, guess what? On my weight loss journey, I've built muscle and I've lost weight and I've fasted a lot. In fact, the majority of my weight loss came from this fasting method known as one meal a day. Fasting for 20, 22, 24, sometimes 26 hours in a day and eating within a four hour eating window or one hour eating window, depending. And not only that, guess what? I threw in some extended fasts here and there. So I really wanna clear up some misconceptions about fasting. Fasting is not detrimental. For some reason, we have this fear of fasting. Everyone's like, oh, you're gonna get scurvy or oh, you're gonna get no get enough minerals. Like one thing I don't understand is that someone who's on a weight loss journey should not be concerned about being mineral deficient. You've got a lot of fat on you. Guess what fat is? It's a storage of energy. Not only that, when you're obese or overweight, you got storage of minerals and vitamins that are stored within your bones, believe it or not. I had someone challenge me in this in a live stream once, but yes, vitamins are stored in your bones. You need to understand that the human body was in fact adapted to famine. Our bodies are adapted to famine. Never in the history of humankind have we had access to this much calories, this much food. And not only calories and food, but the type of calories we have access to. These refined carbohydrates, these processed foods. Our body is not designed to have these foods. Our body was designed for famine because famine, back in the day, okay, when we were, you know, in the savannah or in Europe or in, I don't know, Australia or in the Pacific Islands, wherever we are, North America, South America, you know, North Pole, you name it. <laughs> when we were running around, oh, let's go back before then. It's gonna be, it's gonna be mainly the savannah in Europe. But back in the day, food was scarce. So in order for us to survive, our body made this system to allow us to survive without food. Going into ketosis, have, we, have you ever heard of the hungry wolf? You see the hungry wolf. The hungry wolf has a lot of energy, right? Because it needs that energy to go hunt and get food. The same thing with humans. We need that energy to go hunt and gather food when we are hungry. That's why right now I'm able to fast. Guess what? This morning I did a pretty intense workout. And I'm still able to fast because the human body was designed to do this because we were developed in an atmosphere where we did not have a lot of food. You need to understand that evolution takes time. It's only in the last 40 years that we've had access to refined carbohydrates and a plethora of food. When everything changed back in 1977, when the American people, not American people, but the American government made the standardization for diet. So when that happened, we were told to eat more refined carbs. You know, the food pyramid, the food pyramid that caused obesity, you know that one? The food pyramid that spiked, you know, what do you call it? Diabetes type two, that food pyramid, high blood pressure and all sorts of cancers. That food pyramid was telling us to eat naked carbs. What are naked carbs? Carbs that are not found in nature. Carbs that are stripped of its polyphenols and fiber. Our body was not designed to do that. Our body is actually designed to hold on to fat so it would let it go because we, our body would anticipate another famine. That's what the human body was adapted to do. Evolution takes hundreds of thousands of years to process, hundreds of thousands of years to change. We've only had this change in about 40 years. So why do you think we're seeing a plethora of illnesses, a plethora of modern diseases? Because our body was not designed to have these foods. And you need to understand why people are gaining weight. They are gaining weight because of the hormonal theory of weight loss or weight gaining. And that is basically when we eat, insulin levels go up. Insulin tells our body to store food as fat or glycogen. So when we are constantly eating, 
which is what we were told to do with these new guidelines, we are constantly spiking our insulin. And when we are constantly spiking our insulin, what are we constantly doing? Storing weight. So people need to understand that. Another thing that people need to understand is that these refined carbohydrates are things that our body cannot process in that when we eat them, we are not getting proper satiety signals. So when we normally eat carbs in nature, we usually eat it with meat and you know fruits and vegetables. So when we normally do that, we get in fiber. So when fiber comes into our stomach, there's our stomach stretches and there's a stretch hormone hormone that gets released that tells our body to stop eating. That's a satiety hormone. Another hormone that gets released is peptide YY. It's a hormone that gets released when we eat lots of protein and that pro hormone goes up into the brain and tells our body to stop eating. Another hormone that we get is cholecystokinin that happens when we eat fat so and gpl1 is a hormone as well you know the one that's you know created ozempic that's another video for another day but these hormones are produced when we eat things like fat proteins clean fats and proteins whole foods just one ingredient stuff and carbohydrates in nature that's fine with a lot of fiber did you know that bananas that we see them right now are not nature's bananas? Nature's bananas is actually full of seeds. We've genetically modified them to a point where they have less fiber and higher sugar content. So you have to understand what's happening here. Our body's not designed to handle these foods. And the way they, our body handles these foods is that we store it immediately as fat. And not only that, it increases our satiety signals because when we eat naked carbs, we're not getting that pep pep peptide YY, we are not getting cholecystokinin, and we're not getting that stretch hormone to tell us to stop eating. It just goes right through. And then we crave more. Why do we crave more? Because these carbs spike our insulin levels. And when our insulin level spikes, obviously it's a correspondence with the glucose levels. And it's that spike up and down that makes us hungry. Not only that, what else happens is with when you are eating foods that are high in sugars, high in fructose corn syrup, all that stuff, frosted flakes and blah, blah, blah. What happens is our body cannot go into fat burning. Our body is in a constant state of fat storage. Why? Because we begin to crave these foods more and more because it bypasses our satiety signals. We crave these foods more and more because our body depends on getting foods from outside sources as opposed to burning the fat that's on us. Our body will crave more sugar because it just stays at being a sugar burner instead of becoming a fat burner. And how do you become a fat burner? Metabolic diet, eating whole foods, lowering your glucose levels, lowering your insulin levels, fasting. Yes, fasting. It boggles my mind when it comes to fasting that people are criminalizing fasting, seeing that it will, you know, you get nutrient deficient. You're not nutrient deficient, okay? You are not. We don't have people dying of malnutrition right now. We have people dying of obesity and obesity related causes, okay? Just get that through your head. So don't worry about it. I hate when people stress about, oh, am I getting enough protein? Or, oh, am I getting enough this? Don't worry about that. Worry about getting the weight off. And misconceptions about fasting and building muscle. Did you know that fasting is a hermetic stress? And when we fast, there is a time in the fasting where muscle gets broken down just a little. Guess where else muscle gets broken down? In the gym, okay? In the gym. When you're building muscle or you're pushing things up or you're doing heavy stuff, muscle also gets broken down. It's a hermetic stress. A hermetic stress is a low dose, dose level of stress that our body needs in order to get stronger. So it responds to these stresses by building itself back up better. That's how you get bigger muscles. So fasting is a hormonic stress that does that. Not only that, fasting helps produce the mTOR pathway. And mTOR is a substance that helps to promote muscle growth and muscle hypertrophy when you couple it with eating protein and going to the gym. So I don't like these big misconceptions that fasting messes with the muscle. It only does if you do it too much. You have to have a balance. If you're gonna like fast for 30 days, yeah. 
But if you're going in and out of OMADs and you're eating enough protein and you're putting that stress on the muscle, it will be fine. We have to understand muscle is built with stress. It's built with progressive overload. And then to help that muscle get built even further, you got to make sure you're getting in protein. So you're not going to lose the muscle if you are exercising and you're putting load on that muscle. I hope this video was useful for you. It went a little longer than planned because I was ranting a bit. But if you made it this far in the video, just drop in some star emojis. And I'm sending you guys mad love. Take care. Bye.